Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint, and if you've ever wondered what the main differences are, or which is better, between a QNED TV and an OLED TV, well I'm going to answer that today. We've got a 75 inch QNED mini LED TV on the left, and a 77 inch OLED on the right. Both share some similarities, but both have a few different pros and cons, which could influence which is better for you and your setup. Before I jump in, drop a like on this video and let me know which you prefer. Is it OLED or QNED, and why? So I have tried to set the TVs up with exactly the same picture settings. Although for this video, I did need to reduce the brightness of the mini LED TV, which brings us onto the first and biggest difference between the two. Generally speaking, OLED TVs are ideal for darker rooms, watching at night, or rooms where you can manage the light conditions. They don't get super bright, and even at 100% brightness, you wish you could get a little bit more from them. The newer Evo panels are definitely an improvement, but for me personally, OLEDs are bright enough in normal conditions. It's only when compared side by side with a QNED TV you really see the difference. The QNED is noticeably brighter, which might not sound like something that you need, but if you have a bright room or you've got it placed near a window, the extra brightness really comes in handy. And this was one of the biggest things that I noticed with this mini LED TV, was just how bright it could get in normal viewing conditions. Flicking between the two TVs, especially when they are both set to 100% brightness, it was a clear difference. And when it comes to the picture quality between these two, it is pretty close. Seeing the same image on screen is hard to even tell them apart. So they both obviously support 4K and HDR content, which means almost any movie or TV show that you throw at it will look impressive. And you can already tell just by looking at the screens that the colours really do pop on both. So from an image quality point of view, you cannot go wrong with either. Now although the contrast and the black levels on the QNED are good, like really good for an LED TV, they struggle to match that of the OLED when it's side by side. This is due to the fact that the mini LED uses loads of dimming zones to control the light of the TV, whereas the OLED uses self-lighting pixels. And this is how we get those infinite or perfect blacks often mentioned when talking about OLEDs. The deeper blacks on the OLED means you'll get better contrast in the picture as well, which is something that you can easily see. Now as I say, the QNED blacks are very good, but the dark areas are more of a really dark grey rather than than jet black. This isn't something that you notice unless you're watching at night, but it's something worth thinking about depending on where and how you use the TV. Now you might have noticed this already, but the screen coatings are different on both of the TVs. The OLED has a glossy, almost mirror-like finish, while the QNED has a matte coating instead. So both are different and both have a pro and con to their finish. If you're using it in a bright room or near a window, reflections will be something worth thinking about. An OLED can be super reflective if there's a window directly opposite. So if you're watching it during the day and the sun is beaming through, it's not going to be easy to view. The QNED on the other hand with its matte finish allows it to be viewed more easily during the day or if you've got it closer to a window. So in a kitchen, this would be perfect. And that goes hand in hand with the bright panel. So if you've got this set to 100%, you're not going to see many reflections at all. Now, viewing angles were one of the biggest features that set an OLED TV apart from LCD, as LCD TVs were either edge lit or backlit, so as soon as you walked off centre, you'd lose all contrast and struggle to see what was on screen. But over recent years, with the introduction of QNED and mini LED TVs, this has massively changed. The gap is a lot closer now between the two technologies. With an OLED, you can view it at pretty much any angle and still see exactly what's on the screen. And this is ideal if you've got seating off-centre in your room. Now, with QNED, it's not that much different. Sure, you're going to lose a little bit of contrast as you move around, and it's not quite as good as OLED, but it's still very impressive, and most people would be more than happy with it. Right, so gaming on either of these TVs is an awesome experience. I've mentioned this in other videos, but I often game on my TV setup instead of my desk setup. That's because it's a whole different experience. It's a lot more immersive, especially with those campaign or story-driven games. Now, this is definitely overkill, having both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X set up on the two screens. But it shows you just how good they both look side by side. But it's not just about how good they look with the colours, contrast and clarity, but it's how they perform as a gaming TV. And from my experience so far, both of these are rapid. As long as you get a TV with a low input lag and response time, it's going to be a decent experience for gaming. Pair that with HDMI 2.1, VRR, 120Hz, and these are as good as a lot of monitors out there. And the input lag is most noticeable when playing FPS games where you pull the trigger and hope and expect to have an immediate response. And if you go for an LG TV, well they have the game optimizer mode, and this lets you see and tweak some of the settings of the game that you're playing. I still think this menu is the best that you'll see across any TV at the moment. So yeah, if you wanted to use a TV for gaming, either the QNED or an OLED would give you what you needed, plus they look great. 
Now, if you do plan on using a TV for gaming, you could be concerned or worried about burn-in. It's one of the questions that I often see asked in my OLED TV videos. So burn-in is where you get image retention if you display a static image or logo for a long period of time. Things like heads-up display, maps, or speedos in games. Now, historically, OLEDs were more prone to this, but there's less of a concern now with the features that are built in. Things like pixel refreshing, reducing logo brightness, and screen shift. Now, personally, I've never experienced burn-in on any TV or monitor. That includes includes OLEDs. And that's after hours of gaming or watching TV. Now on top of that, my children use this TV for gaming as well. And if I was concerned, I simply would not let them use it. I know some of the latest OLEDs like the G series do come with a five year panel warranty as well. So once again, if that was a concern for you, you know you've got that backup. QNED on the other hand has no risk of burning, so there's no OLED care option on this to mess around with. But if you are using a TV of this size for gaming and movies, you've seriously got nothing to worry about. Now using it as a monitor, however, with a taskbar and windows open all day, now that could be an issue, but that comes down to your own usage. So this next one is a strange one, but if you wanted a large TV like a 70 inches or more, you'll find the sizes are different between OLEDs and QNED. So let's say you wanted a 75 inch TV. Well, you could get a 75 inch QNED, but when you look at the OLEDs, you would have to go for a 77 inch instead. It's not much of a difference, but if you had a space in your room that you needed a particular size, this could potentially sway your decision. Now, most TVs look the same, and design is subjective, but I think OLEDs do look a little bit nicer. I'm not sure if it's because of the slightly slimmer bezels or the thin frame, but they do look great. LG QNEDs do look nice though, and the 2022 model that I have here with the darker grey stand is a lot nicer over the previous model that we've seen before. But again, the stand or the feet could be another factor when choosing a TV for your unit, because most OLEDs have the flat panel at the front, whereas most QNED TVs have feet instead. Saying that, if you're going to wall mount the TV anyway, Way, well the stand on these are irrelevant. But when it comes to wall mounting these, you might find the OLED TV is a better choice if you want it as flat as possible to your wall, as generally speaking they are a lot slimmer especially with the new G2. You could have it practically touching your wall giving it that picture frame look. The QNEDs are a little bit thicker with all of the internals required, but even for a TV of this size it's not bad at all. And the biggest point that most people start with when looking for a new TV is the price. If it's not within budget, it doesn't matter how many features it's got, you're not going to buy it. OLEDs used to be really expensive, but over the last few years, we have seen them come down quite a lot. You can almost pick up a 77-inch version now for the same price as a 65-inch only a couple of years ago. QNEDs are, by comparison, more affordable. That's not to say they are worse, it's just that they are different technologies being used. It's LCD versus OLED, so if cost is a factor, you might naturally look towards the QNED TVs instead. So with all of that said, looking at the brightness, picture quality, reflections, gaming, burning, and a few others, which is the better choice? Well, as mentioned at the start, it really comes down to which is best for your needs or the room that you're using it in. For me, a brighter room with windows opposite or right next to the TV, I would go for a QNED. It'd be a lot more forgiving with the matte screen and the extra brightness. But if you can control and manage the lighting in your room to reduce the reflections, the OLED is, in my opinion, the overall better choice. The screen has more clarity and those inky blacks are hard to pass on once you've seen it. But what about you? Which would you choose and why? Let me know in the comments. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my 2022 room tour video next, as this is the last tour that you will see in this house. I will share more about this soon. Thanks for watching. Please like, sub and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.